Welcome to substitution and inverse trig functions. So just a quick reminder, uh, recall we have our inverse trig derivatives and intervals. So recall that the derivative of tan inverse of x is one over x squared plus one which means that the integral of one over x squared plus one dx was tan inverse of x plus c. Then we also had that the derivative of sine inverse of x was one over the square root of one minus x squared, which corresponds to the integral of one over the square root of one minus x squared dx was equal to sine inverse of x plus c. And then finally, our last integral came from that the derivative of secant inverse of x was one over absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus one. And we write this with the corresponding integral one over x square root x squared minus one dx is equal to secant inverse of x plus c. So now that we have u substitution, we can get some variations of these. Uh, for example, let's go ahead and evaluate the indefinite integral, uh, the integral of two over x squared plus nine dx. So we have x squared plus nine. We would like something of the form, something squared plus one in our denominator. So this is similar to tan inverses one over x squared plus one. So we need to manipulate into this, into the format one over something squared uh, or some one over something squared plus one. So we need to manipulate into, uh, we can also actually write it as a u prime over u squared plus one situation. Right. Then the u prime dx becomes just du and we have our one over x squared plus one scenario. So uh, note if we pull out a uh, note that two over x squared plus nine, if we pull a nine out of the denominator, we can turn that into a plus one. So this is two over nine times one ninth x squared plus one, one ninth x squared plus one, all in parentheses. Uh, and so this is equivalent to two ninths times one over x over three in parentheses squared, and then plus one, that x over three squared plus one, all in the denominator. And so we have then that our integral of two over x squared plus nine dx is the same thing as two ninths times the integral of one over x over three squared plus one dx. At this point, this is set to go ahead and apply u substitution. Our inner function here is that x over three. So we'll go ahead and set u equal to x over three. Then we have the du is just one third dx, or 
dx is 3 du. So plugging in, our integral now becomes 2 ninths times the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1 times 3 du, or 2 thirds times the integral over one of 1 over u squared plus 1 du. That integral we know, we get 2 thirds tan inverse of u and then plus c. Plugging in our u equals x over 3. We wind up getting that our integral is equal to 2 thirds tan inverse of x over 3 plus c. In general, uh, we can apply u substitution to sort of a generic form uh, and get a variety of formulas. So in general, if we wanted to take the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared dx, we could pull out a 1 over a squared out front. We have an integral of one over, we would have an x over a, the whole thing squared in our denominator, as well as a plus one, then dx. If we set u equal to x over a, we get that du is one over a dx, and equivalently dx, is a du. We wind up then with our integral being equal to one over a squared times the integral of one over u squared plus one times a du. And this becomes one over a times tan inverse of u plus c, and of course we then can plug back in our u. Uh, if we plug in the fact that u is equal to x over a, then we wind up getting that the integral of one over x squared plus a squared dx is equal to one over a times tan inverse of x over a plus c. Apologies, I need to move uh, some things on my screen. All right, so this was our first generalization using u substitution. Uh, we can pull a similar trick for the secant inverse and sine inverse case. So we can pull a similar trick for the sine inverse and secant inverse case. And we wind up getting Uh, the integral of one over the square root of a squared minus x squared dx is equal to sine inverse of x over a plus c. Uh, we lose the one over a out front in this case, since the a squared itself started inside a square root. Once we pull it out, it just becomes a and cancels uh, with the A from the ADU. So here's our second variation. This is our variation of the sine inverse case. We also get that the integral of one over X 
times the square root of x squared minus a dx. That square root also in the denominator. This is equal to one over a times secant inverse of absolute value of x over a plus c. Uh, I apologize. I realized I missed an absolute value in my original function up here. We should have had a secant inverse absolute value of x up here as well. All right. So let's go ahead and just do one more example. Let's evaluate the indefinite integral, uh, integral of one over x squared root x squared minus 25 dx. So in this case, we have our a is five, since 25 is five squared. And then this is the secant inverse variation. And so we wind up getting that the integral of one over x times the square root of x squared minus five squared dx is equal to one over five times secant inverse of absolute value of x over five and then plus c. So again, these are some initial variations of our inverse trig integrals uh, using new substitution to figure out what those variations would be. <laughs>